George Washington Carver, born 1865, died 1943, African-American agricultural chemist. George Washington Carver, born in slavery and orphaned in infancy, rose to national and international fame as an agricultural scientist. Carver grew up and was educated in the northern United States and later became a faculty member at the all-black Tuskegee Institute in Alabama, working in the forefront of the infant discipline of scientific agriculture. Carver devised and promoted scores of uses for peanuts and sweet potatoes, and he had, had a significant effect on the di diversification of southern agricultural practices. His testimony in 1921 before the House Ways and Means Committee achieved a tariff to protect the U.S. peanut industry and was the beginning of his identity as the peanut wizard. He also worked with hybrid cotton, conducted experiments in crop rotation and restoration of soil fertility, and developed useful products from Alabama red clay. Carver was a widely talented man who became an almost m mythical American folk hero. He was deeply religious, explaining his wide-ranging interest as attempts to understand the work of the great creator. Carver was born near the end of the Civil War in Newton County, Missouri. His birth date is uncertain, although historian Linda O. McCur McMurray, Linda o. McMurray suggests that he was likely born in the spring of 1865. His mother Mary was owned by Moses and Susan Carver, who were successful farm owners in the state. His father is believed to be a slave on a nearby plantation, and he was killed in an accident soon after Carver was born. His mother disappeared following a kidnapping by bushwhackers. And Carver and his brother were brought up by Moses and Susan. Carver was a frail and sickly child, and because of his weak health, he helped with the lighter tasks on the farm. He quickly mastered various household tasks, including cooking, laundering, laundering canning, crocheting, needlework, as well as learning the alphabet and music. He also spent considerable time indulging his deep curiosity about nature, building a pond for his frog collection and keeping a little plant nursery in the woods. His talent with plants made him the neighborhood plant doctor. At the nearby Locust Grove Church, Carver heard a variety of Methodist, Baptist, Campbellite, and Presbyterian circuit preachers and acquired a non-denominational faith. In 1877, Carver left home for the county seat of Neosho to attend a school for blacks. This was the beginning of a long journey through three states in pursuit of basic education. In these years, he supported himself with odd jobs working for and living with various families along the way. In Neosho, he lived with a black couple, Andrew and Mariah Watkins, and helped with chores. He learned herbalism from Mariah, and he quickly recognized that his knowledge outstripped that of his teacher. In the late 1870s, he hitched a ride to Fort Scott, Kansas, and moved in with the family of a blacksmith. Shortly thereafter, he moved to Olaf, Kansas, where he made his home with another black couple, Ben and Lucy Seymour. He entered school, helped Lucy with her laundry business, and taught a class at the Methodist Church. In the summer of 1880, he followed the Seymour to Minneapolis, where he established a laundry business and spent four years, four years attending school. In 1884, he moved to Kansas City, acquired a typewriter, and took a job as a clerk at the Union Depot. His thirst for education continued, and he was accepted by mail into a small college in Highland, Kansas, only to be told when he arrived there that the college, that the college did not accept blacks. He stayed in Highland for a while, then moved to Ness County as a homesteader. On the frontier, Carver built a sod house, farmed, took his first art lessons, played accordion for local dances, and joined the literary, literary society. Around 1890, he sold his homestead and moved to Winterset, Iowa, where his talents in the industry impressed the white couple, Dr. and Mrs. John Mill Holland. They persuaded him to enter Simpson College, a small Methodist college in India, Lo, India Nola. Carver quickly made friends on campus. He had intended to pursue art, but his art teacher, Etta Budd, encouraged him to consider a career in botany and suggested to enroll at the Agricultural College at Ames, where, his, where her own father was a faculty member. The idea appealed to Carver. Agriculture would allow him to be of service, 
1891, he left for Ames in the Iowa State College of Agriculture and Mechanic, and Mechanic Arts. At Iowa, Carver was a popular student and active in a variety of campus affairs. During this time, his painting, entitled Yucca and Cactus, was exhibited in Cedar Rapids and selected as an Iowa, as a Iowa representative, representative for the World's Columbian Exposition, Exposition in Chicago in 1893. For his wide-ranging abilities, Carver was affectionately called Doctor by the other students. His academic record was excellent, and his skills in raising, cross-fertilizing, and grafting plants were recognized by his professors. His bachelor's degree thesis, Plants as Modified by Man, described the positive aspects of hybridization. He stayed on at Iowa for graduate work and, appointed, and was appointed as assistant in botany. Freed at last from odd jobs, Carver can now devote himself to greenhouse studies and teaching. Carver received his master's degree from Iowa in 1896 and accepted a position at the Tuskegee Institute, Alabama, at the invitation of its president, Booker T. Washington. He was to spend 47 years at Tuskegee, living most of that time in Rockefeller Hall, a dormitory occupied by students. The early years were difficult for Carver as he had numerous responsibilities at the Institute. Besides heading the Agricultural Department, Carver was also director of the newly established Agricultural Experiment Station. Additionally, he managed the school's two farms, taught classes, and served on committees and councils. Despite all of this, in 1910, unhappy with the number of agriculture graduates, Washington removed Carver from his charge of the Agricultural Department. Carver submitted his resignation, following which Washington made him director of a new research department and consulting chemist. Experimental work was more to Carver's liking. From the beginning, Carver had worked on a number of projects to help improve the lot of poor southern farmers. He analyzed water feed and soil. He experimented with paints that could be made of clay. He worked with organic fertilizers. He demonstrated uses for cheap and locally available materials such as swamp muck. He searched for new cheap foodstuffs to supplement the farmers' diets. In addition to human diet, I, in addition to human food items, he developed stock feeds, cosmetics, dye, stains, medicines, and ink from peanuts and sweet potatoes. In his agricultural bulletins, he offered elementary information to uneducated farmers. In 1916, Carver received two prestigious invitations to serve on the advisory board of the National Agricultural Society and to become a fellow of the Royal Society for the Arts in London. In 1919, under Tuskegee President Robert Russa Melton, he received his first salary increase in 20 years. He had become increasingly popular as a lecturer and his testimony before the House Ways and Means Committee in 1921 thrust him into the national limelight. In 1923, he was awarded the Spingarn Medal from the NAACP for his contributions to agricultural chemistry and for his lectures to religious educational and farming audiences that had increased interracial knowledge and respect. Other honors included an honorary doctorate from Simpson College in 1928. In the mid-1930s, the word chemergy, chemergy was coined to mean putting chemistry to work in industry for the farmer. Carver became a spokesman for chemergy just as he had been for the peanut industry and the New South. In 1937, Carver met the industrialist Henry Ford at a key conference Ford had sponsored. A long friendship developed between the two men, and when, in 1940, Carver established a foundation to continue and preserve his work, the Carver Museum, the Carver Museum in Tuskegee was dedicated by Ford. The museum contained 71 of Carver's pictures, as well as handicrafts, case studies, and the results of his research. Carver received numerous awards and honors for his contributions to the field of scientific agriculture. Noteworthy among these were the Roosevelt Medal, which he received in 1939, an honorary doctorate from the University of Rochester, and the first award for outstanding service to the welfare of the South from the Catholic Conference of the South. In 1942, Ford erected a Carver Memorial Cabin, erected a Carver Memorial Cabin in Greenfield Village, Michigan, and established a nutritional laboratory in Carver's honor in Dearborn, Michigan. Carver also received an honorary degree, an honorary doctorate from Selma University 
a fellowship from the Thomas A. Edison Institute and was a member of Kappa Delta Pi, an honorary education society. Carver's health had begun to fail in the 1930s. When he died in, on January 5, 1943, Tuskegee Institute was flooded with letters of sympathy from many people. Carver was buried in the Tuskegee Institute Cemetery near the grave of Booker T. Washington. On January 9, 1943, President Franklin D. Roosevelt paid tribute to Carver in an address before Congress. And on July 14, 1943, Roosevelt signed legislation making Carver's Missouri birthplace a national monument. Citations are in the description.